Okay, doke. So we did our test upload and we saw that the clothes actually fit the body and everything is swell. But now we have to texture it because, you know, what's the fun of having clothes in Second Life without a cool texture on it? I mean, this is not 2006, people. So um, what we want to do is separate the clothes and the pants from each other. I'm, I mean, the shirt and the pants together because I'm only going to work on the shirt because it's more fun to edit a t-shirt than it is to edit a pair of pants. So what I want to do is hold, go into edit mode. So select the garment first. Then go into edit mode by pressing tab. Then we can do two, one of two things. We can press L and select it this way and press P and do selection and then that will undo it. Or we can um, turn on our, let's say if your garment is all one and you press L and it's not selecting, we can separate it by material, like by uh, UV map. So you would press this button down here in the UV window. It's a keep UV edit mode mesh and sync. And this is why I said I need you to keep a gap between it so you can easily select these things. Um, you will press B and it opens up the box select and you can just select your mesh this way. And then come back over into the 3D window and press P and then do it by selection that way. And that will work out for you if you wanted to separate your garments. Now let's say for some reason you are not satisfied with the size of this because now that it's just a t-shirt the UV map has a lot more blank space we can work on you could leave it like this if you want to or you can change it and resize it now Photoshop uh, Photoshop blender has a little neat feature that allows you to automatically resize your stuff inside of the UV box and that's called packing the islands <laughs> it sounds so dirty you gotta pack those islands and that makes the shirt bigger um, the UV maps bigger inside of the box but the problem with that is once you change the UV UV map um, in Blender, it won't line up with the UV map that you have in Second Life. Like, let me say, it was an error on my mistake, my part, and I've been making this error quite often in my recent tutorials. We exported the shirt out first, and then we come in Blender and we change the UV map. Now, if we change the UV map, it won't line up with the one that we have imported in, and you'll have to re-import the shirt into Second Life again hope that makes sense because the maps are different now so it really is up to you so I'll just show you how to change the UV maps um, if you don't want to change it and you're cool with this you can leave it as is but if you want to change it automatically this is how you do it so what we do is we press A and select the mapping here and we go down to the UV map and we select pack island or control P now this looks a little odd for us although the islands are packed it's kind of sideways so we just turn your attention over here to the pack island um operations menu on the right hand side and you want to uncheck this box that says rotate and it gives you something a little more mm, a little better now if you think that these are too close you can just change increase the margin here and it gives you a little gap so you make sure they're not overlapping or anything so this fills it in as best it can without you having to do it automatically, which I kind of like this one a little bit better than the other. So now that we have our UVs set the way we want to, it's time for us to bake a texture onto them. And this is basically our shadow map so that we can get like some shading in on our texture so it's not just a flat texture. So it's kind of cheating. <laughs> okay, so first thing we need to do is bake our shadow map or an AO map. And we do that by going into the right hand, the left hand, that's right, the right menu over here, and I select the little world button, and then we click the enable uh, ambient occlusion, and this works best in Blender Render. <laughs> I'm sure cycles people have a a, a a workflow, but I love Blender Render more than I do cycles. So I choose AO ambient occlusion, and I turn my leave. Well, we'll leave samples alone so I can show you the difference between sampler. So we have our AO on. Oh, my doorbell. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I'm not entirely sure where I left off. A lot happened when that doorbell rang. Um, so I guess I was showing you how to make a texture, a bake map, AO map. Okay, so we have all the AO stuff set up. I 
think. Yes. And then I'm going to press A and like put my cursor over here in the 3D menu. The 3D window and press A. So that's highlighted. And then we're going to go back over here to the 2D window. Oof. And I'm going to select new. And we're just going to name this t-shirt to keep it clean. Hit OK. And then I'm just going to go back to the render menu, which is this little camera right here. Scroll down until we see bake. And switch it from full render to ambient occlusion. And then hit bake. And I'm going to wait for it to bake together. And you see it baked, but it came out green, which isn't that great. I'm going to switch over to our display shading texture solid so you can see what color the shirt actually is when we bake it now the reason why this shirt came out green is because that's the color that we have our diffuse shading here from when we are in marvelous so if we wanted to make a, a shaded green shirt this would be perfectly fine <laughs> but for the most part we want to keep this white that way we can put other colors on top of it when we go into Photoshop so we'll just turn this to I think one one and one and that'll make it solid white. So when we bake again, go back into edit mode when you do so. It should be nice and white. Now let's talk about sampling. Because that's something you will have to pay attention to. Let me zoom in. Do you see all this staticky noise kind of texturing here? Personally, I like that. But some people like it nice and smooth and no uh, grit. So we have to just turn our samples up. Right now it's at 5. So the lower it is, the lower the number is, the more grit your texture will have. And the higher the number is, uh, the smoother your texture will be. But it also sucks up resources, so it'll take a little bit longer to bake. So I'm going to double it from 5 up to 10. And... Now you see here, it's nowhere near as much noise on the texture as it was when it was at 5. Okay, so we have our texture here, and it's ready. We're just going to save it now, so we can go File, do, 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 Save As. And I'm just going to press the plus up a couple times. Let's just have it, because I always accidentally save over it. <laughs> so I'm going to hit Save As. And now we have our shadow map onto our texture. Now we just need to export our t-shirt out as an OBJ and then we can put it in Photoshop and play around with it. Now it's very important that you export it as an OBJ and not as a DAE, a DAE file because DAEs don't really like Photoshop that much. So I'm going to call it shirt for painting. Whoops, I did something wrong. So select this, go to export, OBJ, and we're going to hit selection only. And this is going to be our shirt for painting. Okay. All right. And then we just open this up in Photoshop. So that's going to be our last video. So I'll see you guys over there. And we get into the fun world of 3D painting. Eee.